The first step is to find the canister and then the vapor hose coming from the fuel tank. Once you find the correct hose, you just clamp the hose about one to two inches behind the canister to seal the system. I found in the past it can be difficult to find the canister and hose. Well, if you check under the hood label for the canister location, it's not difficult. Usually the location is pretty obvious. Another source is the pinch point guide. What's nice about it, it shows an actual picture of the pinch location, although the guide doesn't include every car. Okay, let's look at the underhood label. It should show where the canister is on the car. Oh, there it is. Pretty simple, right? Of course, I already located the canister in the pinch point when I did the EVAP visual inspection. You'll discover that the traditional visual inspection and the new low pressure fuel evaporative tests blend together. That makes sense. If you're already doing a visual inspection of the EVAP system, you might as well locate the pinch point at the same time. That's right. A visual inspection, which includes the canister and hoses, is required before conducting the test. I find it efficient to blend the tests. So from the canister, let's trace the vapor hose leading back to the fuel tank. Let's see. Here's the canister, and here's the vapor hose to the tank. We'll pinch the hose right here, close to the canister, but not so close that it damages the canister's hose fitting. We'll do that when we're prompted by the tester. Before we start the pressure test, let's cover some basic safety precautions that you need to be aware of. The testing area has to be well ventilated, so we must keep the bay door open any time we perform the low pressure evaporative test. We need to use only nitrogen gas to pressurize the EVAP system as specified by the tester manufacturer. Using a non-flammable gas like nitrogen lowers the fire hazard risks. Be sure to store the nitrogen bottle so that it is secure. Always turn the engine off before removing the fuel cap and performing the pressure test. Make sure you ground the car as per the tester manufacturer's procedures. Make sure there are no ignition sources close to the vehicle, like a grinding wheel, acetylene torch, or lighting cigarettes. Okay, we have checked that the safety precautions have been met, and we have changed over to another system to carry out the test. The tester is warmed up, the nitrogen bottle valve is open all the way, the nitrogen bottle pressure is good, and the regulated pressure is good. So what's a good pressure? Well, the nitrogen bottle pressure starts full at about 2,000 PSI. I'd say we should get a replacement bottle when it gets down to around the 200 PSI range. That way, we don't strand the customer if we run out of gas. The regulated pressure going to the tester should be around 90 PSI, according to the tester operator's manual. And then the tester itself has another regulator that reduces the pressure down to about 32 PSI. The tester further reduces the pressure down to 14 inches of water, and that's about a half a PSI to pressurize the EVAP system. Wow, that sounds like a lot to remember, but I guess it's more or less a one-time setting. That's right, and besides, the tester has a built-in safeguard that won't allow the test to begin without the correct pressure. Makes sense. Let's get started. The car's ignition is off, the transmission is in park, and the emergency brake is set, and we also have the shop door open for ventilation. Okay, from the tester's main menu, select fuel EVAP test. The tester will now do a self-test. If it passes the self-test, it's going to ask for the last four characters of the car's VIN. Now it is asking if the car has dual fuel tanks or not. It doesn't. So I enter one for no. Okay, now the tester prompts me to select the filler neck adapter. To do that, I simply match the adapter cap style to that of the gas cap on the car. In this case, the black adapter cap is a match. So I enter that type into the tester. Okay, enter yes. This is the correct adapter. If none of the adapters fit the car, enter that information into the tester by selecting the correct menu item. Additionally, you would enter N or non-applicable in the bar 97 EIS for the functional fuel EVAP test when you have a situation like this. So now we'll install the adapter. Now the tester is asking us to crimp the EVAP hose. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, Dave, I did that. Now I'll connect the hose to the tank. Oh, 
Oh, and just as a side note, you can stop the test anytime by pushing the escape key on the keypad. So how do we know if the test passed or not? Well, the tester displays a pass-fail result. If it's a pass, we enter that result into the EIS. On the other hand, if it's a fail, the tester will automatically ask us for a seal verification test. The prompts are self-explanatory. Basically, we would need to verify that we crimp the right hose and that it is properly sealed. Makes sense. To do a seal verification test, the vapor hose must be disconnected with the pliers still attached. And you must insert the special balloon plug. If the balloon fills, then the crimp pliers are not sealing correctly. In cases where the hose can't be removed, you would attach a second pair of crimp pliers. Also, you need to check for leaks around the filler neck adapter. In either case, we need to follow the prompts to ensure a proper seal before entering fail into the EIS on the second and final entry. So, the only time I would enter fail into the EIS is if it failed after the seal verification test. Kind of like a second chance test to make sure we really have a leak. Exactly. The test should be done now. Let's see if the car passed. Looks like it did. Now we need to disconnect the tank adapter hose, but first we need to remove the crimp pliers. This allows the system pressure to normalize and allows the fuel vapor to be absorbed into the canister rather than going into the atmosphere. So let's do that now. Let's input the test results in the EIS. I've done the visual inspection and performed the tailpipe test. I am ready to enter the functional test results for the EVAP test. We have three choices here, pass, fail, or NA, not applicable. It passed, so I'll enter P for pass. Okay, that's it, we performed the EVAP test. See, there's nothing to it. Got it, thanks for your help. Other testing situations may arise that you need to be aware of. If the vehicle has metal or plastic EVAP hoses, the tank to canister hose must be removed to obtain a seal. The tester manufacturer supplies a variety of soft tapered plugs with the tester to seal the system. Insert the appropriate plug in the hose end to seal the system. On some vehicles, an EVAP test cannot be performed. If the EVAP system is completely inaccessible or the vehicle would need to be jacked to get to the canister area, then do not perform the test. In this situation, enter N non-applicable for the functional EVAP test in the bar 97 EIS. In addition, the technician must write a statement like EVAP system inaccessible on both the customer's invoice and vehicle inspection report. If the visual inspection of the EVAP system indicates a tamper condition, the EVAP test is still required. Most EVAP visual failures appear between the canister and engine. The rest of the system is typically not visible for a visual inspection. The technician still needs to perform a leak test to get a complete picture of the system's condition to discover any leaks not caused by the tamper condition.